So the overall sentiment, uh, Julia, is that the sentiment is rising, uh, but it's not saying in the bubble. I also saw mm -hmm. uh, interesting from Bloomberg. Uh, right now, it's from the AAI survey. Mm -hmm. uh, this survey, which they interview around 2 million people with a question that's going to be interesting to look at. Um, but although this sentiment uh, graph is good to spotting lows, it's not as good to spotting highs. Mm -hmm. uh, you can see the lows on 2009, how we then entered a bull market rally in this AI survey, uh, which it's a little bit um, not too much followed since it's a uh, uh, it's an American associ association of individual investors. It has 2 million members, but you actually need to pay for this. Oh. Yes. So to be able to be here, so actually it's uh, uh, it's overall, uh, right now it's current price. It's not that bad, the sentiment, although it's uh, positive. Each week, uh, the actually the AI members ask these questions. I got as this simple question. Do you feel the direction of the stock market over the next six months will be up, no change or down? And well, following with the, with the capitulation, Julia, I don't know if you've watched, but right now, investors, banks are actually scrambling to change their predictions on the market. They set a target of 5,100 and they adjusted to 5,200 as well. Well, that's a new one. Um, but Goldman Sachs doesn't see a bubble. And this is what I'm saying. Well, analysts scrambling for their new price targets increases. Barclay, Barclays original price target was around um, 4,800. The new one's actually at uh, 4,300. Piper Sander, another of the most renowned uh, market analysts, also original S&P uh, 500 target, was at 5,000. The new one is at uh, 5,250. UBS has one of the highest uh, price targets at uh, 5,400. Previously, used to be at uh, 4,800, a little bit higher, but they've been on the need to do that. Uh, most banks have actually done it. JP Morgan is a most uh, bearish one with a uh, 4200 uh, mark for the S&P 100 year end and Bank of America with a 5400 which is uh, pretty bullish but not too crazy to think right now in this market so it's been hard for analysts to actually catch up to the market because it's been surprising almost uh, everybody investors and even the biggest banks which have the, the most information and the third point Julia liquidity well uh, liquidity has been able to actually push the market upside uh, with investors since they need to spend it on something. Most of them they spend it, as uh, many reports have said, Americans are not that uh, good at uh, actually saving, but maybe at investing there, 60% uh, of Americans do invest. Um, if they buy stocks, as is often the case, the valuations can start to surge, which we've been seeing. And the more liquidity there is, the more stocks will naturally tend to rise. Rates, one of my favorite topics to touch about is uh, what's going to happen about the rates. Uh, we've made a segment about uh, talking how interest rates previously have shown to uh, when they are decreased to actually decrease the market. But they tend to be because of a major macroeconomic picture. Um, the reason rates are actually decreased has to be because of a major trouble, not because the market is at a certain level. But lower interest rates has historically caused speculation fear a little bit to the downside but the important thing is to see whether they're justified that's the main reason why are they lowered why are they decreased right now the main reason is whether inflation is at its uh, fed target at two percent here to the right we got the um, market speculation for the rate cuts of this year the market right now three rate cuts uh, since from the seven it actually expected at the beginning of the year so the market is in line with the overall Fed. They were expecting seven. Right now they're expecting only three rate cuts for this year. And the graph on the left changes uh, shows the changes in the S&P composite uh, with the S&P 500 index over the 12 next months after the Fed starts easing rates. Mm -hmm. So we can see the, the years after they started uh, decreasing rates. We got September 98, but two of these events when the market actually increased um, had to do by other major macroeconomic e events. Uh, one of them with a um, overall default in 95 happened similar with uh, Mexico's default, mm -hmm. defaulted nearly in 94 with its debt. So that had uh, the US in trouble. 
ended up higher. So there is no main reason why the market uh, tends to go up or down after the Fed uh, decreases rates. We have to look what's the main reason, what's the underlying uh, event of why do they do that. So may maybe there's a lot of fear because once they decrease them, we've seen there's uh, been a lot of an impact for the coming year for the market. Mm -hmm. On uh, August 69, January 2001, May 81, September 2007, of a decrease in the S&P 500, but we've all seen positive events. So yeah. like it's a speculation overall. The IPOs, I found this pretty interesting. The most IPOs were recorded was 1999, mm -hmm. with an average first day gain of 71% for all IPOs, which is just uh, crazy to think. That is uh, crazy. Oh my God. In 2020 and 2021, well, the first day gains were um, 42% and 32%. Mm. with uh, 311 IPOs for 2021, and uh, which was uh, the second highest since 2000. And last year, how many IPOs there were? Well, only 54. Even though the market averaged the S&P 500 a 24% gain into the bull market, with an average gain of 12% in the first day gain. So maybe we could say that the market is uh, not getting to rational levels, but the excitement is decreasing a little bit with the uh, price to earnings measure right now is at 25 times for mm -hmm. the S&P 500. The average price to earnings for the S&P is at 19. So right now it's overvalued and it's key to predict the next year's market movement. Uh, well, uh, not key, but it can help you predict a little bit. And this chart uh, highlights uh, price to earnings with the following 10 year returns, which right now uh, we can see that for the upcoming 10 years at the current price to earnings, um, we can expect uh, not too much growth on the S&P 500. This is taken in with a grain of salt, obviously, mm -hmm. um, but for those who like valuations or, or look at them, in my case, I tend to look at it. Well, um, yeah, right now the current price to earnings shows that for the upcoming 10 years, the market, we can expect it to be, for it to be muted. Yeah rather than when it's at its uh, normal um, or its average 19, which will be around here. It's around the uh, eight to 10%, which is the average return for the S&P 500. Yeah. I mean, IPOs are going to be interesting because I feel like there hasn't been a lot of very notable ones in the past couple of years at this point. But I mean, like in terms of like the biggest IPOs in the past 10 years, you have like Uber 2019, you have Rivian 2021, Coinbase 2021, Airbnb 2020, DoorDash 2020, Snowflake 2020, Snap 2017, Robinhood 2021, uh, you have Lyft, Toast, Open Door, um, Pinterest, Affirm. So like there, there were some big names, but when we look at back at the performance now and see how they've been doing since their IPO, it's been pretty I mean, less than spectacular, I would say, for most of these, or not most, but I'd say a lot of these. Yeah. And to end this, Julia, mm -hmm. uh, well, the question is, well, uh, since the current rally could lead to a market downturn, mm -hmm. we've, we've talked about a lot about that, entering the market now will have you or investors more cautious of when to sell or when to take profits. I think, uh, yeah, um, I think valuations are getting way higher. Mm -hmm. Right now, uh, it's way above its average of 19 price to earnings for the S&P 500. Mm -hmm. Why? Because overall, um, earnings have been pretty strong for the market. And if this tends to be correct, or if this proves to be correct, we can expect a, a muted market for the coming 10 years, mm -hmm. as the actual price to earnings is right now at 25 level. And, and I found it interesting. I think there are contrarian, uh, like, indicators for the market where it can go up or no. Valuation mm -hmm. definitely shows using only price to earnings, which is one of the most important metrics. Mm -hmm. Definitely, uh, say, sell, sex signal or, or cautious signal, maybe. Mm -hmm. um, and the other ones, sentiment, um, also uh, interest rates, them and all that, can signal maybe a, a follow-up continuation. And uh, this is why it's uh, hard to actually and say or expect, the, especially for the IPOs. I think they were interesting to see that first day gain. Yeah, I think I mean, so too. 